Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Today, Pastor Benny Hinn begins the second message in his teaching series on how you can be delivered from spiritual oppression and bondage. The Holy Spirit is more willing to deliver you than you're willing to receive it. But He needs your cooperation. God Almighty is looking for a people who will join Him hand to hand, heart to heart, because deliverance is somewhat complicated. That's why many believers are bound today by demonic forces and do not know how to get out. Well, it's not something you can do on your own. The Bible makes it very clear in Scripture. And I want to just kind of really make this so clear to you. In Psalm 33, verse 16, and I'd like this on the screen too, please. It makes it very clear. You cannot deliver yourself. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. And it says a mighty man. Now, you know, it didn't say a weak man. It says a mighty man is not delivered by much strength. Even somebody who may be strong in other areas may not be strong in this one. You got to hear this, please. Everybody, everybody is born with a weakness. Let's be honest about it, okay? Everybody in this room and everyone around the world is born with a weakness. We all have a thorn in the flesh somewhere. Because all have sinned. And sin, the Bible makes it very clear, is a powerful force. You're not able to deliver yourself from sin. Only Jesus sets you free from sin. Only his presence sets you free from sin. Because sin is a powerful enemy, a powerful foe. No king is saved by a multitude, by an army. And a mighty man is not delivered by his own strength, by much strength. And then we see the same in Amos chapter 2. Please turn to Amos 2 and put it on the screen for me. Verse 14 and verse 15. Where God repeats that truth. Therefore the flight shall perish from the swift. Wow. Even one who is swift is not able to run away from this problem. From this stronghold. And the strong shall not strengthen his force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. The mighty cannot deliver himself, it says in the scriptures. So what must I do with this problem we all face? Well, the Bible makes it very clear what to do with it, but let's first look at uh, Isaiah 49, verse 24 through 26. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive delivered, and God makes it clear that it is His will lawfully that we be delivered. Thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. Why? For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save not only you, but your children too. What is the Lord saying? In verse 25, he says, Thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. In other words, those who are captives to the mighty, and the mighty here are demonic powers, 
even the captives will be removed from their hands, taken away. But how? Well, he answers that later, of course. And the prey of the terrible. Now, the prey is, is the individual who's bound, and the terrible is Satan. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. How? I will do it. I will contend with him that contendeth with thee. I'm the, I'm the man of war, God says. I'll fight your battle. And I'll save your children. But Lord, what do I do? Well, he makes it very clear what you do. And it's found in Isaiah 51 verse 14 through verse 16. It talks about the captive, the one in bondage. It says, the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed. We all want to be free, right? Say amen. amen. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed and that he should not die in the pit. Now this is very important that you hear this. If you're not delivered from the stronghold, eventually the stronghold will drag you into the pit. And the pit, well, you know where that is. And so the captive of the exile, the captive of exile hasteneth, he's, everything in him is, is, is screaming for deliverance, that he may be loosed and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. And his bread should fail means that not only will he end up in a pit, but he would die early before his time. This bondage destroys. Nobody can last if they're bound. Longevity is the proof of freedom. I'm going to say it again. Longevity is the proof of freedom. When someone is still there, but only God can keep you there. Anointed, being used of the Spirit. Notice how many have gone, removed because their bondage took them out. But here's the key. Here's the key. This is this is what I want to get through to you. Verse 15: I am the Lord thy God, the divide. Did the sea, whose waves roared, the Lord of hosts is his name. So God introduces his, uh, himself here and his amazing power. He says, I'm the Lord and I'm your God. Even you that are bound, I'm still your God. I have not forsaken you. I'm the one who has divided the sea. In other words, I have, if, if I have power to do that, I have power to set you free. The Lord of hosts is my name. Why does he bring in the hosts? To show you I have an army to fight your battle. I'm the Lord who divides the sea. In other words, I can do anything, including setting you free. And I have with me a whole army that will fight. Hallelujah. I am the Lord of hosts. I can command my angels to deliver you. But I got to have something inside of you now. I have put my words in your mouth. Here's the key. If the word of God is absent from your mouth and your life, you are powerless. God has nothing in you he can use then. The word is the weapon that God puts in you. I've put my words in your mouth and I have covered you in the shadow of my hand. In other words... When my word is in your life, then there will be protection over your life. Amen. Put my words in your mouth and I've covered you with the, in the shadow of my hand. Now think about this. In the shadow of my hand means that hand is so close to you, blocking the sun from touching you. Shadow means I'm covered with his hand over me. God says my word 
will cause these things to come your way. I put my words in your mouth. Now, when you put somebody, uh, when you put food in somebody's mouth, well, they're going to participate, don't they? They have to receive the food and chew it and swallow it. You can't get that food inside by forcing it on them. Nor can you just put it on a, on a, a plate or something, some bowl, hoping they'll come by and pick it up. God is so gracious that he comes to us with his word in his hand and says, eat it. And we have to participate. We have to cooperate by receiving it from his hand. And chewing upon it by meditation. That's how we, we chew. Swallow it. I put my words in your mouth. I've covered you with the shadow of my hand. That I may plant the heavens. Lay the fountain. Now this, this means that, that you would have authority now in your lips, in your mouth, with your words. I may plant the heavens, lay the foundations of the earth, and say to Zion, you are my people. When, when, when God says that I may plant the heavens, he is giving you authority to be uh, a partner with him to plant the heavens. The word of God gives you power with God. Say that. The word gives me power with God. Say it again. Hallelujah. So you have to receive the word. Deliverance in your life from that stronghold begins when the word of God begins to invade your life. When the word begins to invade, the source of deliverance is the word. And the word of God begins to, to invade. Now you begin to receive strength to fight that thing. Whatever it is, overcome it. All right. Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord. So when you have received the word, now you're able to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Please remember his might is his word. God has exalted his word. Hallelujah. His word is established forever in glory. Now Paul, the apostle, begins to talk about how to be not only protected, but how to be delivered from the enemy. Remember, you, ha you, you have a very busy enemy who goeth about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's his job day and night. He's looking for vacancy. And I'll talk about this in just a second. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says, and, and Paul hits it big time. Finally, in other words, listen, pay attention. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And he had already told them, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He already told them to give thanks. And he already told them, submit yourselves one to another. And he already told the husband to love his wife as Christ loved the church. And, and, and if you look at Ephesians, he's talked about a lot already. All these are important commands that you must obey. But finally, big headline, be strong in the Lord. Because you can, there's nothing you can do if you're not strong in the Lord. You cannot love your wife if you're not strong in the Lord. You cannot be filled with the Spirit if you're not strong in the Lord. You, can, you, you cannot understand the mysteries of the kingdom if you're not strong in the Lord. There's nothing you can do without that strength. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Okay, now Paul, what do I do? Put on the whole armor of God. And wait a minute. If I'm strong in the Lord, why do I need one? Why do I need an armor? 
Because there's a devil out there who's a very strong and powerful foe who's not toothless like some people say he is. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able, hear this, to stand. Stand against the wiles. All right. The word wilds means plans, tricks, and traps. Again, the word wilds means plans of the enemy, the tricks of the enemy, and his traps. I, I, I will, I'll show you scriptures on this in just a second. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Again, those wiles are what? And, and, you got them. Okay. Stand against the wiles of the enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this world, the rulers of the darkness in this world, and spiritual weak, weakness in high places. And, and most of us Christians know this verse by heart. But we, we, we don't understand how this army functions. Tomorrow, Pastor Benny continues this message on how you can walk in total liberty from bondage and spiritual oppression, beginning with an understanding of who your enemy is and how they operate. And to further equip you in spiritual warfare, he wants you to have his landmark audio teaching on demonology and deliverance. In two vital and timely messages, you'll learn where demons come from and how they operate, the seven steps into bondage, how to expose their activity and gain complete victory over the forces of evil. You can have demonology and deliverance on CDs for a gift of $25 or as a digital audio download for your computer, tablet, or smartphone for a gift of $8. Call right or order online today. I pray that our wonderful Jesus will meet every need in your life today. Listen, I know you just heard the Word of God, but I want to pray with you. I want to come into agreement with you that every need will be met, whether it be spiritual, emotional, physical, or financial. And believe God today, if you're sick in body, to heal you, I feel the healing and owning already. The Lord wants to make you whole. Now, all I want you to do is stretch your hands towards me. I'm stretching mine towards you in faith believing. Jesus said to us, if two, that's you and I, will agree, it'll be done. If you're sick in the body, place your hand on the sickness and God himself will touch you today. Father, in Jesus' name, O God of Abraham, God of Isaac and Jacob, we come today in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Lord, I agree with my brother. I agree with my sister that that need in their life is met, whether it be spiritual, emotional, physical, or financial. And dear is Jesus, for those in need of healing, let your healing power flow right now. Let your mighty Holy Spirit touch them, I pray. Your word says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Let the blessed Holy Ghost do right now his blessed work in them, Lord. I rebuke that sickness. I rebuke that disease in Jesus' name. A lady just a minute ago felt a warmth go through your right hip. You've had troubles, very serious pain in the right hip. The Lord is healing you. Sinus has also been healed. Jerry is your name very bad sinuses, leukemia, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. A heart murmur is being healed, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. A lady with complications uh, with your pregnancy, um, Kathy, there's a Kathy watching me. Uh, the doctor just told you a few days ago, that there's been some complications. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray with Catholic Lord, that they'll be, right now, give her a miracle. Yes, Lord, touch her in the name of the Lord. Amen. You, you're going to have a very healthy boy and call him Matthew. 
The Lord just said that to me, said, please tell her, she's gonna have a healthy boy named Matthew. You wanted to call him Matthew? He's a little boy. Now, bless the Lord. I see somebody else, just a second. I see somebody with a, with a very serious um, spinal injury. I think you fell or something. And the Lord is healing that. Fibromyalgia also has been healed. Precious Lord, heal every person calling on your name. In Jesus' glorious name. The greatest miracle is not healing, it's salvation. If you want to know the Lord, just say after me, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need you, Lord. Come into my heart. I give you my life today. Wash me with your blood. Amen and amen. And to Jesus be all the praise. And remember, he loves you. I'm coming to Miami, by the way, August 1 and 2, Bank United Center. Make sure to come bring your loved ones and friends with you. Then I'm coming to New York, uh, August 13, 14, and 15, and 16, two locations, Long Island, the 13th and the 14th, and the information is on the screen for you. Then Brooklyn is the 15 and 16. Make sure to come bring your loved ones and friends. Be powerful. The Lord will meet you there and touch your body and make you whole. Bring your loved ones and those who need salvation, you in Miami and New York. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Pastor Benny invites you to join over 2 million Facebook users around the world who like Benny Hinn Ministries. Go to the ministry website and click the Facebook link. And while you're there, be sure to start following him on Twitter. Connect with Pastor Benny. My precious friend, Mike Murdoch here. What a joy to be a part of Pastor Benny Hinn's ministry. He's our ambassador. He goes where we can't go. He's a warrior for the souls of men. I love his passion to destroy pain on the earth. I was sharing with some of his team recently. I said, my book, A Thousand and One Wisdom Keys, is God's favorite book next to the Bible. And I laughed and said, he's never corrected me. <laughs> I want you to have a copy. Let me tell you, the 13th of the 1,001 Wisdom Keys, three words that made me a multimillionaire. Decisions decide wealth. If God decided who had money, the mafia would be impoverished and missionaries would have plenty of money. It's our decisions that decide our prosperity. When God spoke to me that, I was in a four-hour time of prayer with the Holy Spirit, and He gave me those words, decisions decide wealth. I believed Him. Three decisions that I made. My decision to become a lifetime learner. A lifetime learner. God didn't tell me to pray for money. He said, learn if I want to prosper. Isaiah 117, learn to do well. So I made a decision to ask questions relentlessly because the most powerful thing in the world is a question. Until you ask questions, others control your knowledge. Questions expose deceivers. A question summons solutions. If you made a decision to ask seven questions every morning about your financial life, you would double your finances in 12 months. Remember I said that. Another decision was to enter into a covenant with the 112th Psalm. I'm telling everybody about it, and I can't tell you. I was reading Psalms, the 112th Psalm, where he says, a man that delights himself in the commandments of God, wealth and riches would be in his house. Now, the only part of the Bible that works for you is the part you believe. That's the only part of the Bible that works for you, the parts you embrace. Remember that the difference in people is in the art of receiving. God gave love to everybody on the earth, but you and I received His love. Until you get good at receiving, you'll never prosper. Receiving instructions, receiving correction, receiving a change, receiving mentorship, receiving an opportunity. And when I read the 112th Psalm, I laid my hand on the 112th Psalm and said, God, every month, one time a month, 
I will sow a $112 seed and place it on the Word of God. Then I went to every seven days. Then I put it on, I think the bank calls it auto draft, which is the easiest way to sow. Because consecutive sowing creates consecutive reaping. Whatever you do, when you sow into our ministry here at Benny Hinn's ministry, whatever you do, put it on auto, gap, auto draft or auto giving. I call mine automatic seed. I want to pray two things over your life. God put a territorial anointing on me unlike anything I'd ever known. Houses and lands. I never knew anything like it. God said, remember that the first proof that I'm with you is to give you land. He gave Adam a piece of property 3,000 miles by 2,000 called the garden. I'm asking today for 1,000 partners. Don't call right now. Wait till I finish. But as soon as I quit, the phone line is going to be open. Our prayer partners are receiving the 112 covenant. Say that word. I am a receiver of the 112 covenant. Psalms 112. Just say it again. I am a receiver of the 112 covenant. There's somebody watching me right now and said, if I had $112, Brother Mike, I'd send it. Well, if you don't have it, you better enter the covenant. Do it by faith. If God doesn't give you the $112 a month, and some are sowing it every seven days like me, if God doesn't give you $112 a month, how could you ever be debt free? He said, I will give seed to a sower. Holy Spirit, I've shared with our family here at the Benny Hinn Ministry that goes into nations we could never go into about the 112 covenant. We either reject it or we embrace it. Today I ask you for 1,000 receivers of the territorial anointing. Every time you give me a piece of property, give them a piece of property. We honor the 112th Psalm, a man that delights in your commandments. I ask you for 1,000 who will step out of poverty, out of stress, into a covenant. We are receivers of the covenant. Amen. I feel like you're just supposed to say that. I'm a receiver of the covenant. Now, reach for your telephone. Please do it right now. And I hope you do it on automatic seed sowing. And ask for the thousand and one wisdom keys. It's my gift to you. The Bible declares that following God's commandments is the key to blessing. Sow your Psalm 112 seed today to enter into a covenant which can activate His blessings upon your children, your finances, and your spiritual life. When you call to sow your $112 gift, ask for your copy of Mike Murdoch's book, 1001 Wisdom Keys. This treasured volume will open your eyes to recognizing, understanding, and applying biblical truths to every situation, problem, and opportunity you'll face in life. Sow your seed in faith and claim God's promises. Don't delay. Call, write, or give online today. 